going to do now is I've set my laser and I've got a, a reference of 100 mil. It's got no significance other than it's a regiment I want to use. I've marked it off this one that I've got all leveled and fixed and I set my legs at 160. And just to make sure this all goes in the same now, I should just get my, my level like that, my tape measure. And that is dead on the 100 mil mark. Now, some lasers, it's quite, they're quite thick. So make sure you, you reference your tape measure to top or bottom of the laser. That makes sense. Because sometimes the layer, I mean, this is about a mil and a half thick, this laser line, um, depending on how close you are. So just reference it in the same place. But all we'll do anyway, I'll get these, I'll get all these set now to suit the laser. And then I shall level off the six foot off here anyway, because that's my data point, that's where I started from. So I'll level from here with my six foot, get them all in line. Um, and then obviously I've got to start cutting out holes for my, my waist and what have you, for this sink unit here. So that's what I'm going to do now. I've got some fixings to show you from um, Timco. And they are a, um, a fixing designed exactly for dabbed walls. And what it is, it's a bar, and I'll show you in a minute. It's a little bar that goes inside the plug and spans the gap between the back of the plasterboard and the block work and spans that void to make sure you get a solid fixing. And I can use this on this because they're about four inches long, I think. So I'll get them and I'll show you how I use them. So these are the core fix fixings that I'm going to use to put these um, base units in. Now, they are designed to, to hang heavy stuff, really. So if I was putting wall covers up on this dabbed wall, then that's even better, because this is exactly what they're designed for. Now, Adam has already pointed this out on his, on his last episode, um, which, if you haven't seen that yet, is on the screen now, that um, we use Timco quite a lot, and things he pointed out on the the box he was looking at at the time, the stuff he was using, was how straightforward all the instructions are in terms of what size drill bit you've got to do, what you've got to do after that, which is great when you use them for the first time. And this is um, this is a, the 100 mil version. Now, I'm, I'll stand corrected, and if it is wrong, I'll put it on the screen now. But I'm pretty sure you can get these in different lengths. I'm sure you can. Um, take a look on Timco's website um, and find out where you can buy them from for yourself, because you can't buy direct from Timco. You have to go to one of their um, the places that they sell their stuff. So anyway, what you do is you drill a 10mm hole, knock that into the wall as normal, like you would a normal plug. You then put that inside there, knock that into there, and then you put your screw, screw through in the hole. Caught behind the Venetian blinds How to reach for the city lines And this ain't where I belong Ain't look at me, man, what I become I've been running east Looking for something Digging deep since now Because you're not a salesman, isn't he? On here, there's no mere maximum you can allow for fixing. And on this look, it says maximum 10 mil thickness of stuff you can have protruding from the wall. Hence, that gap there was too big and it wasn't catching. And I thought, well, why is that not working? I thought, ah, then I remembered. 
there's always a maximum on them. So all I'll do now is I'll fix that in between, uh, cut that for in between here, push it into place, and I'll then fix then into that. That's what I'll do instead. I'll do the same for this one, same for this one, and get it all solid. All I know, I got lost along the way. Right, so next morning now, the last bit of footage you would have seen would have been me putting the um, core fix fixings into here to put my baton on. What I've done here is I've just used a good 80 um, mil um, five screw into a plug into the block work. Again, that's solid dab that I know that is. Um, I didn't put one here because I'd already fixed it at the top. Did the same at the bottom. There's dab there, so I've put a solid fix into that as well. All I did then was I fixed this bit of MDF onto the side of here in preparation for, I'll be fitting this, which goes on the corner here, like that, along with a, a decor end panel. I know you've been hurt, I know that you're trying, the boss is complaining, your phone's always ringing, outside there's the cold wind, inside the monotony. Baby, we need an exit from this. Honey, we need a sweet release. I know I will feel them, the electric feelings. You and me all night, yeah, I'll be alright. If you close your eyes, so close your eyes. Feel the sunlight, baby, we'll fly. To my dream, wanna get away when I do too. My dream, go outside again, me and you. Mm, fall in love one time, two times, three hundred times. Wanna get far away, boy, I'm tired of the rainy days. Now I got you warm. So in a nutshell, that's it. Just make sure that you uh, do little things like setting your, I'll set my square, make sure that's equal all the way up. So when the door sits on, and you can't really notice it, it all sits nice and the same. There's a, there's the same, the same gap all the way up, that you can see. Um, so it looks tidy. Now, in the design, that is a 500. Uh, don't um, it allows for these panels that's why because if not uh, 600 600 you got 44 mil with two 22 mil panels so that couldn't put a 600 above that so as a consequence what i've done is even though the plan said differently i've put that 500 covered center of this one so the there's the gap there if you like between doors including the panel this side and the scribe there will look the same even though obviously there'll be a panel this side and not a panel this side, because the panel now is going, representation of the level, is going like that. That's the way it'll go like that, you see, on the side, all the way up to the top, and then the scribe will go in there. But I can't do that yet. So what I think I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead in the utility and cut the two um, wall panels, um, sorry, decor end panels for walls in the utility. And then what I'll do then is I'll come back in here and I'll start setting out for the uh, Cornish and Palmy.
So all I did was I made sure that when I set my um, the little pencil round on this, that it's it's just level with the doors. If you can just about see that when they're sitting flush. So I just put my square on the face of that and on there, and then drill through and screw it into the into the side gables of each one. Um, okay, so I'll set that tight. That's all nice and tidy up there now. Um, it may be that I've got to take this off again, but that is at least it's set. It's cut to length, so to speak. But it may be that when I come to do this one, um, I'll have a look at how it looks with regards buttoning it up or, or whatever. But I tend to look at either internal mitre, which I don't like to do. Uh, but this actually cuts quite nice. Um, or I'll scribe it over. So we'll have a look at that when we come to it. But when these covers are going to come, I don't know. So all I'll do now is I'll do exactly the same with this. I shall put this on now. Um, look at the finger marks on there. Um, good thing is, finger marks. Timco sent me something else. Just look at that. I sent me these. So what I'll do, I'll give these a bash. So it removes everything. So what I did do actually earlier, I actually rubbed it on one of those, those panels to make sure it doesn't take any paint off and it doesn't. So I shall do that after. So there we go. That just reminded me we got them. There another something else from Tim Cow. So thank you very much again, Charlie. So I shall get these cut, get this cut. I shall put this one in as well. This one can then stop in against the panels. And then we start looking at doing the scribes. Scribes, so I'm going to put a scribe in there, and this is a straightforward because it's parallel because these are level, so it's parallel. Um, I can't do any on that end because obviously it's still covered. I can't do any this end because there's no uh, tour unit, so it's a bit of a pain, really. I've got some scribes to do in the utility, um, but uh, again, it's fairly straightforward. The walls are flat in there, so I've only got to sort of cut them against the existing walls, that is, you know, like that. I haven't got to do any kind of uh, particular scribing as such just cut them to uh, to length. So I'll probably use my track saw for that rather than a little table saw, because um, I can turn it over and then uh, just stick it through the track saw. So this gap there is 27 mil. So what I've done first is I've cut myself a piece of um, 27 mil stuff from my track saw. But what um, Ren have supplied is, is 130 mil by 22 mil, so same thickness as this. 130 mil by 22 mil by a metre of stock. You can just take this out of, so it's coloured the same. So I'm gonna put that in there first, and I've cut this to the 720 like that. And then I'll, this is flush with the bottom of there. And as you can see, I've took this off just so I can see and make sure that's nice and flush, which it is. And then what I'm gonna do is, because this, this same stuff has got a manufactured edge on, I'm then gonna set this like that on the top there. So it forms the same detail as this one in terms of wrapping the door. That's what I'm gonna do. I shall make sure that's set back enough um, which is just in from the edge of this uh, and then I'll fix that on there like that that's what I'm going to do and then the door will sit against this and uh, that'll give you the same sort of effect as that that's what I'm going to do but I think what I'll do first is I'll get these put them on the bench fix that to that from the from this side first to put it in one piece and then I can then hold this by fixing this this one into the cupboard there because obviously I can't fix this into here 
because when you open this door, you're going to see any screws. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'll do that first, and then uh, I'll show you what it looks like in a minute, shall I? You would have seen me um, screwing these together coming and we've had some good news about all of this what's happened with the cupboards and i'll talk about that in a minute so all i did was i put the piece underneath that i was going to plant on that is still under there look i've then screwed or drilled the hole then all the way through into this panel and then screwed all the way through to sandwich it together so it's solid then what i've done is let me just come back a little bit and then what i've done is i've then glued um the armiter bond onto here, glue that onto that one that I've already put on and glued it onto this side panel. So that's all nice and flush, so you can see that's all nice and tidy. I'll finish that there just so it sits with the door. I think it'll be better than coming down here because that will sit on there now like that. All nice, that sit back like that, all nice and tidy. Uh, yeah, like that anyway. So um, that'll go on there. Let me just move that, that's it. Um, and then all I did, I got my veneer pinner then. And then, I mean, you can't even see, I've put my veneer pinner into there, 23 gauge. And then they supplied this kit, any like a touch-up kit, and that's a bit of wax there. And a bit of, um, a bit of like a Scotch guard type stuff there. And I put a bit of wax on the tiny hole, and you can't even, well, it's in the middle of the shot now, and you can't see it, can you, on the film. And that's where the hinges are anyway, so you're never gonna see that, unless you take the door off and have a really, really good look. And there's only me now as it's there. Owen you lot, which is a couple of thousand people. Okay, that's 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 a bad example. Right then, so I'll um, put the door on, back on, and then we can see how it looks once the doors are back on. But I think that looks pretty goddamn tidy. There we are. Look what I'm doing in here now, um, other than I've just put that door back on, where I had to um, sort the hinge out because the hinge mounting plate had pulled out of the unit itself. So I've glued and screwed that back in properly, now that all the glue's gone off. Now what I'm doing is I've just cut this this um, lovely corner panel to height. I'm gonna put the uh, manufactured edge to the bottom and I'm gonna put it on a packer, because this has got to be self-leveled and that yet anyway. So I've just put a couple of marks on to um, set, oh, there we are, sorry, turn that round. A couple of marks on there to give me my uh, set out for my door, so it sits to the face of my door. I'll pull that on, uh, put that on now and screw it in place, temporary, to then set out um, my panel. So I've got a, full, a proper dimension from there to the wall. Um, I might mark a line and then just put a panel in place and see how bad the wall is. But we did that, so I'm, I'd like to think that's as, as good as it can be, really, because it was all levelled and put in by us. So um, I'd like to think that's all good. So hopefully it'll just be a parallel cut, top to bottom. But who knows? Just give it a go and uh, and we'll see how that looks, but I'm hoping it'll look quite nice. However, some good news. We had confirmation yesterday from Wren that they are going to replace um, that cupboard. Get my finger in the right place, that cupboard there. I forget which one of my fingers are going to go on and on the camera. So that cupboard there, um, which was a smaller one on the design. I think I showed you that they are pretty much allowed a smaller cupboard because it was going to touch the ceiling. But now we've dropped all the cupboards down. They're also going to replace these, these tall units that are wrong. Um, and they're wrong because the dimension in that hole there, that 
that cut token would never have fitted anyway. Don't matter what the design says, there's a big concrete lintel there and it would never have gone in. Okay, just looking at this now. Um, again, I've put the manufacturer to the bottom just for moisture. I'm gonna have to take a little bit more of that. You can sort of see, just about see, but in fact, the is pretty good, in fact. Um, if you look at that, though, where that is, that's potentially gonna be right there, and it's gonna cut, have a bit of a horrible cut. So, um, again, I've took the blade thickness out. It may look a bit rubbish, if I'm honest. So what I might do is work it out now and cut whatever that dimension is from there to there, I may then halve it and bring to leave that much panel either side. I think it'd look a lot nicer. Um, it means removing both manufactured edges, but to be honest, that's that's pretty good. That is there. We know scribe required at all, so a square edge won't matter. Uh, and when the customer sort of corks it in anyway and the skirting goes round and the worktop comes over, it's not detail that I've ever be seen anyway, so I th that's what I'll do. I think I'll just um, work this out now. Cut there, mm -hmm. cut there, and do that instead. Right then. Okay, that looks uh, pretty tidy, even if I do say so myself. So I'll set that back a little touch more, just so it's on the pencil round. But that is pretty goddamn perfect, even that one. And say, so paying some attention to when you do your walls and things at the very start of the job, then progresses and makes this job easier. No scribing, I've just cut that square, other than it's one mil bigger at the bottom. Um, which, to be honest, it's probably that little bit of a lump there that's done it. So, uh, and so I could have sanded that off. So I'll do a bit of a return skirt, so I can pin that now in my 16 gauge pin out once I've glued it. And I'll put um, a skew screw in the top there into this button. Um, and you won't see that because the workshop will go on the top. I think I need to check that and just make sure, mind you, I'm only talking half a mil. I might just take a little tiny bit off the top there just to make sure it doesn't fail the work top. But I'll have a look at that, I'll put my level across in a minute and see what it looks like. Um, but that'll be feed fitted, and all I need to do then is put these brackets in there, like that. Excuse my big uh, pig's tits for fingers. Um, in there, like that, first. And then I'll put this, this and this together back in situ uh, and, and screw it there. And then I'll have to obviously take these screws out first and then put the whole lot back in place again as it stands right then i think i'll do that and that's another job done and i'm happy with that looks really nice In all new dishwashers then, you'll have that inside your washer. You'll have this fixing kit, which is your brackets and things. You just need to make sure you've got hold off. And obviously you have your hoses already attached. Um, you'll have little things like, there should be a little, what's it here somewhere? This as well, that is for your, um, 
underside of your worktop for there goes up there um, if you've got a wooden worktop just sort of protection really for the wooden worktop from the steam when you open the door but in this instance we won't be using that uh, also in that pack you'll have this which has got all your instructions on for the installer and if you've never, never done it before breaks it all down for you and also this then serves as the template for your door as you can see here look tells you where everything's going so if you've never done it before uh, good luck with that because it's a bit of a minefield as to which which um, company you use uh, brand or whatever as to how easy it is to install your door but um it's generally quite straightforward so all i'll do i'll have a quick breeze through these myself so just to make sure that i'm familiar with this familiar with this one and then i'll crack and get it fitted but you just need to make sure you've got like your hole in the bottom there i've just done to get your hoses in do it at the bottom so you can get them under your leg and into the the cupboard at the bottom you don't at the top because it then fells the back of your um, dishwasher so oh that's the back that, that'll come off as well that's just for storage of your stuff that'll come off so um you've got your brackets here like i said i'll fix onto here sorry sorry for the viewers i keep spinning i've got to keep remain to keep slow haven't i try and be slow when i'm using my camera so pack there brackets onto here which then get a later fix into the side of your units there and there to hold this still so i'll get it roughly in place and i'll show you um using the adjustable legs and at the bottom here you will see arrows up and down and that slot there is what works there's a leg you can just about see there when you turn that there's a leg comes out the bottom of there and that's what allows you to adjust the the back let me come back that's what allows you to adjust the back leg up and down so you do the front ones yourself and then you can adjust that that screw and it'll pick your unit up then so that's how to do it so i'll show you that in a minute when i start to put it in Okay, so the radio's off. I saw I like to put the radio on, sorry, so I don't listen to my own row. Um, so depending whether you're fitting to wooden um, board, as it's saying, but wooden worktop, or whether you're fitting to a stone worktop, in this instance quartz, depends which way these go round. You have to adjust it in a certain way. So it's it goes opposite to that. If you're going uppermost to so that bracket to go here, and you would leave that tab that I've bent down there, sticking up this, so you then fix, open the door and you'd fix into your worktop above like that. But if you're going into quartz, you obviously can't fix upwards. So you do that and you bend that down and then that gives you your fixing point into the side unit then. Into there and into there. And when you do your hole in there, make sure that it's big enough for the plug to go through. However, it is a kettle lead. So you just plug it into the bottom there like that. So it can actually go through a smaller hole, but you need a big hole anyway for that. And rather than doing multiple holes, do a hole big enough for that. And then all of that will go in the same hole. So I've having a bit of a mess because the plug socket will go there somewhere because there's a cable for it. So they're at the back there because it's accessible. Get this in place now. Feed everything into there. Get this set, fixed and levelled as per instructions. N uh, taking note of any um, dimensions I've got to have below the worktop, etc. Uh, and then we'll um, we'll look at then putting this door on. So this is all finished, but I've got to put the handle on this first because once you put the door on, you can't get to the screws to fix the door. So we'll have a look at that. First of all, I think what that shows is, if you've got someone with you, it's easier just to try and get these in for no other reason. Um, I don't know why. Now, I'm going to show point. This is, I've done this every single time. Uh, where did it say? Where, oh, there it is. Zero to 60 mil. Just about to see it there. 
I don't think I've ever done a kitchen where I haven't had to put a packer under it. Don't know why. 60 mil isn't enough. Uh, this is a standard. I've got my legs set at 160, so I'm 10 mil bigger. But I was 75 mil below the top of my unit there, where it's got to be. So I still need to pack it up anyway. Don't know why they don't allow a bigger leg. Um, I've always had to do that. Every single one. When I've took old kitchens out, I've seen exactly the same. The packer under the dishwasher. Don't know why. But that's what it is. So, um, things to pay attention to. When you're setting this, these gables, make sure that it's 600. What I've done, I did it once. And luckily I could sort it out before I, I noticed before I put a back panel on. I'd set it to 600 from the inside. Of course, the dishwasher won't go in. So make sure that's set at 600. Dead, dead size. And make sure that when you fit it, these are level. So then you can get a line here with your doors. And also that across here is level as well. And that it's 600 at the back and at the front. Don't set that at 600 because if this wall wasn't an... If this is an old wall. If this come in like that at an angle and you've set it, this front could be 590, but the back could be 600. So make sure you measure front, back, top and bottom to make sure you, that you've got your minimum 600 required. Let's say dishwasher won't fit. And the idea of getting it all nice and tidy is that when it's fitted, and now this isn't fitted yet, I've got to put, fix these screws into the side. It's just kind of the door. Is that the rubbers on the sides, and I'll show you more once I've fitted and screwed it in, that the rubbers down there, there's no gap at all. Now there is a gap because that's the door, but what you can't see, hang on, let me see if I can get this door out one handed, hang on. All right, there we go. You can make sure that rubber there is all tight to the cupboard, look, all the way down. That's what you need to make sure. And you've got to make sure that this rubber across the top and the top of that bracket touches what will be the underside of your worktop as well to make sure it can't move. Now, I'll get this fixed, get the door fixed first, and then I'll put some screws in there, stop this moving. I'll put my door on first to make sure that when it's fixed, because of this, there's a bit of a standoff on these brackets of supply here, in here. There's a bit of a standoff, the actual dishwasher itself. But I want to make sure that when I fit the with dishwasher door properly, and get it in place that this door and that door line up it may be that that's got to go back a little bit it may be that it's got to come forward a little bit to make sure it's in line with this one and this one so i'll get it all get it all done first and then put my handle on obviously and then i'll fix that into the side once i know that's in the right position depth wise so this one's fairly straightforward it's just a couple of brackets on the bottom on there as per template just take your time what it tells you to do first is put your template on here Get the line of your doors and marks, you get it all set. And then this determines then where this, those brackets drop into there to make sure when you put it in that all your doors line up, which they do. I've checked that first. I've then put my handle on. Obviously, make sure you put your handle on first, which I'll turn it over in a minute and show you. Drop it into place. It then tells you to pile it hole, a couple of two mil holes in there, which in turn take um, these stainless steel screws in there, that pack, and they drop through these holes one there one there into the from the inside into the door normally you have to remove a couple of screws first but we'll have a look at that now something i wanted to point out very quickly these screws came with the kit these little screws here they're three quarter however something to pay attention to these doors are only three quarter if i'd have used the screws to put those brackets on if you can see if i just show you there that would have come straight through that panel. So pay attention to what you're doing because this is quite a narrow um, style on this one. Um, don't always presume that the kit you get with the with the, the dishwasher is, and uh, the screws, I should say, are suitable for what you need to put onto your door. For example, if you've got one of the, like I have at home, you've got the... Um, the thing on the top there where there's no handle, it's just got like a bit of a cutout, it's like a finger pull. Um, you can't put the top fixing in. Because if you did it as per template, and if you look on here, there, look, if you were to put that hole in, it actually says it there, look. There you are, look. If you put that screw through there as per template, then you go straight through the face of your door. So always be mindful, and don't always trust this. Second guess it, all of it, just to make sure, it doesn't hurt to check before you start fixing into the face of the door. Obviously the back of the door, if these are slightly wrong, it doesn't matter, does it? You can move them, because you're not gonna see it again. But just be mindful when you put your handle on.
or using the screws because these are smaller screws these are half inch screws I've, I've had to go and fetch at the van instead of the ones that come with it so be careful right then so if i just pick this up now if i can do this one-handed these just locate down there not the best footage is it not the best like that and then it makes sure then that your doors are in line if you've set it out properly now that sink door needs adjusting that's got to go um got to go down a touch so i'll do that it looks like as well that the i need to give that bracket a bit of a tap because it's slightly high there look so i'll give it a bit of a tap and then we'll um we'll get this fitted to the actual um dishwasher itself and then i'll look at the under mount brackets in there then and that's it fitted um, just when you pull this door down, all I do is locate it and then I'll just sit it, put it down then and sit it on my knees or get polystyrene that it could, that the, what's it coming, dishwasher. Um, now, uh, before you, uh, do this, identify which of these screws has got to come out. Now I looked at the hole that I drilled in here, the tumor hole as per template, and it was this screw. So I had to take the little screw out, uh, and then put the big screw back in, which then screws the door to this. This, this one was obvious because there was no screw in it. So I knew that was right. And I checked the hole corresponds in the door that I drilled. That all worked. And then, like I say now, I'll set this, get, do a bit of a fine adjustment on the legs to make sure it's all sitting lovely. As per the side, make sure these doors are all sitting nice. Pull this now out to this way or this way, to, or, or adjust that way or that way now to suit, get it all level. And then what you can do, is get your screws put in the side there. Now I think normally that bracket normally comes to the edge of here as a rule. It will come flush with that to get it about right, but we'll see. So I'll get that set and then we'll move on to something else. Okay, starting under mount sink now. I've got it at the box, I've measured it all. Um, and I've just spoke to Ren because I wanted to know what the minimum thickness of quartz I'm allowed at the front. Uh, and they've said 80 to 90 mil. So all I've done then is I've sat the sink on there like that. Uh, I've then um, measured from that point inside the sink to the front of the face of the work, of the worktop, which is going to be 600, 602 in fact. So I measure 600 off the wall and then measure back to the 520 point to that point there inside the sink. And then I've worked out that it's a 20 mil lip under there. That is 20 mil, that lip. And I've just worked my measurements out from there. So then what happens is, oh, that's 20 mil. So I wanted, it worked out that I was 100 mil off the wall at the back then, once I got me, me set for the front, trying to get the, the minimum thickness of quartz. I've then measured it to get the rail, so it'll sit like that, 10 mil in either side. And this other one will go, where is it, where is it, where is it? Oh, I don't know where I put it. Oh, it's under, under that lot. Another one there. These brackets then sit on here like that. My marks I've already put on there are, that mark there is uh, 180 mil, which is the depth of that from here to here. Give it a few mil because you don't want to be tight to the worktop because I have to put silicon around it. So I lay yourself a couple of mil to put silicon on before they put the quartz on. So that'll fix on there like that on my mark like that and that'll make sure my bar when it slots into this um goes in the correct place now there is um, some big bolts here and i'll show you what you do with those in a minute but that's pretty much when you put these in there like that you put the bolt through here which is threaded and then you adjust that up and down that'll sit it'll go into that hole there look up into that hole and sit against the underside of that and you can adjust the bolt then so you can get your fine adjustment, which is quite a good idea. So I'll do that and show you when it's all fitted. That's quite a slow and painful process, putting these bolts in that you've got to put them in after because you've got to put the screws in first. I thought, oh, it's good. I'll go and fetch my nut driver in. I bought these, this nut drive set, really good. Um, I think it's up to 13 mil. I think these are 14 typically. So I've had to put them in my hand. So the holes there now, they sit in there, he says, like that like that let me come back sorry so that sits directly into there like that and what i do now is i put the sink on this and i adjust these now and then lock them off to make sure that this sink is about two mil lower then so all i'll do is i'll just put that across the top of the sink and make sure that when it's on the that is about two mil i'll get a packer underneath and raise these 
just to suit um, two mil down to allow a silicon bead around the top of the sink before the quartz goes on top. So I shall do that. I shall. I will now put you on a bit of a time lapse. So I'll put you back on this, on there, like that, and then off we go. So this is all set now then. Um, I just, you saw me change. What I've done is I'd, I'd, I'd adjusted that one a bit too much and it, and it was sitting at an angle. It wasn't touching at the back there. So they all look pretty even now. Um, what I will say is, is this is two mil, two mil. But that bottom, as you can see, drops down. Nothing I can do about it because I'm two mil there. I'm two mil there, all the way around the main bowl. But this just drops off. And if you put, and if you see this, you can see that as a bit of a, you can see that gap there, look. Nothing I can do about that, because it's fixed there. It's been tack welded by the looks of it, or glued or whatever it is. Looks like a bit of foam glue or something, whatever that is. So, uh, so yeah, that's in now. Um, I've just got to make sure that there's a 10 mil gap here and that the back that side, so it's all parallel. I can measure off this. Get this all measured. Um, and then I may try to put a bit of silicon on the bottom of it or not. Mm, it doesn't say to do that, CC. So I'm reluctant to do things like that when it says don't do it. But I'll, what I'll do is I'll put my plumbing together anyway, make up my wastes, um, and the waste will sort of hold it anyway before it gets fixed by all the silicon that will be on here with the worktop on. So I don't think I'll do that just in case. If you want to take it out, I suppose. It's one of them, isn't it? Right then, I'll crack on with it. Right, I thought it was all going great. Did anybody else see the issue with having bars across the back like that, across the front? So if you did, you could have told me. Look, these are preset. Look at the height of them. There's no bar going underneath there, is there? And that's where the bar sits all the way across there, not that. So, quick thing I've got, I've come into my head now is to drop this further down. I've got some tantalised timber. I've just glued and screwed that onto there. And then what I'm going to do is, because I haven't got anything else, I've got some, I've got some, something else. Where is it? Anyway, I've got some of the uh, offcut of a panel, which is all pre-finished. Um, so I'm going to stick it on top of that because I need about 10 mil more height-wise to get over this nut. So I'll cut slots out of it then. And then it'll sort of sit sit on the sink like that, sit on the sink up and over like that. And that's what it'll do. Um, so that's what I'm going to do next. I'll just show you once it's in situ, but I couldn't see any other way of doing it because I can't move these. If these were the, the lovely uh, hoses, flexi hoses, it wouldn't have mattered, but it's not. This is the waste kit that's been sent. And this is all linked to the overflows on the back. So I can't change it. Sink fitted uh, again. Um, right, as you can see, the issue was this. If you can see the nuts there, look, the nut, um, and I've dropped that by 30 mil, 30, 40 mil, sorry, that, that bracket there is 40 mil higher than that bracket there, just to allow for me to put a chunk of wood and cut it out to go over the nuts. That's pathetic, isn't it? So annoying. But it's back in. It's as strong as it was before. Those timbers have been glued and screwed onto the metal. And the timbers also fit inside the channel, so they can't slip off either because they're inside this channel on both sides, as you can see. Uh, can you see? There, look. A little bit of a gap on that one. But there we are. Out of focus, in focus, out of focus. Sorry about that. Crap, crap, crap camera. Um, so, yeah, that's what I've done. Um, so, I can sort finish my plumbing out now. I can get, the, get these joined up together and try and sort this out now, which is where I should have been probably 45 minutes ago before I started messing with that. But uh, that solved the plan. It's it's structurally sound now. If you can say structurally sound for a sink, I don't know. But it's as supported as it good as good as it should be. 
Um, but like I say, if that was the flexible hose at the back there, rather than them um, ball jointed um, telescopic ones for the overflow, we'd have been okay. But it is what it is.